All right. So uh, here's the test. See if everybody can hear me over the uh, traffic noise next to my house. I had a question about uh, how I uh, how I ran my new fuel system in my vehicle. All right, because I did some modifications to it. As you can see, there's uh, there's one modification uh, right there. Uh, and we're playing around with my new camera here. Um, I have an externally regulated fuel system on this uh, diesel. And as you can see, I horribly, horribly, horribly need to uh, address some uh, oil leaks on this thing still. But uh, it looks like coolant leaking. You can see some coolant right there. But anyways. Um, so whenever I put the engine in, I put an externally regulated fuel system in. And the way this works is, <clears throat> and you can't see through all this um, through all this plumbing and everything, but originally what happened was the fuel came up to the fuel bowl here. Uh, it exits out on this side underneath all this stuff, and you had uh, this side of the engine fed from right here at the front, and then you had uh, this side of the engine fed from the rear because the heads are mirror image of each other. They look exactly the same when you take them off, they're just reversed. So, the way you do this, uh, the, the and, well, first let me explain the problem. The problem is on 7.3 liter diesels, you get what's called cackle on occasion. And what it is, is an improper fuel um, charge delivered on the number 8 injector at the very back of the driver's side. Uh, number 6 injector is in front of it, all the evens are on driver, all the odds are on passenger. <clears throat> number 6 is in front of it. Uh, and they fire sequentially and fire in order of the engine, six to the name. Well, they're fed from the front of the engine. Um, part of the problem with the way the fuel system was implemented by Ford is that there are um, connectors in the fuel system that allow air infiltration uh, from uh, pre-pump. The, uh, the fuel pump is on the rail of the vehicle underneath. And on the suction side of the pump, air can be infiltrated because the fittings they used are these quick couples that Ford uses everywhere, and uh, most people do ever use everywhere, including, uh, you know, over here on the air conditioner stuff. You can you can see one uh, uh, focus here. You can see one right there. That's a quick couple. They use them all over the place, and they're fine under pressure. Uh, they are not fine under uh, negative pressure, under vacuum. They allow air, air infiltration, and so part of the problem is is that um, these um, the passenger side, uh, the two injectors at the back, fire sequentially, and they're the furthest away from the feed point on that side. And any air that gets infiltrated and makes it into that rail get shoved down to the end under pressure and has to run through that number eight injector to get out of the rail. And so you end up with a, a mixture of fuel and air or just air out of the number eight injector. You get what's called cackle. The cure for this is that these heads on the opposite ends from where they're originally fed, they have plugs and you can open them up. Take these plugs out because it's the end of where they machine the fuel rail and they just threaded them and put plugs in them. <clears throat> All the threads are, are uh, eighth inch uh, NPT national pipe thread, so they'll fit everything off the uh, off the. Uh, you, you can get adapters for them right away off the shelf. And so, as you see, I found with this braided steel line. I got it from Jags and a whole bunch of fittings. And uh, I, I don't have a parts list, so if you want to do this, you just go look up a uh, regulated return fuel system <coughs> and uh, uh, go plan it yourself. And, and there. Plenty of forum places where you can get all this, or where you can get the parts list. <clears throat> um, so, how you change this is you redo the plumbing, and we, we take it, all the hard lines have been removed, and it's all this. Uh, the only hard lines that are left are are back down here on the bottom side of the engine, back down in there, uh, where I tap in these uh, um, <clears throat> where I tap in these braided steel lines. Um, but everything on top of the engine is all, is all braided steel. Um, and what originally happened is that your fuel, 
make sure I'm in focus here, we get delivery in the fuel bowl. Um, your regulator, the factory regulator, if you can see it, is actually right here. It's that little nut. That is what I have uh, put on there in order to cap it off. That's where the factory fuel regulator was. Um, and so it would bleed excess pressure off from the fuel bowl at that point and then back to the tank. Um, and then uh, the other side of the bowl over here is where, um, back down in there, I don't even know if I can get down in there. You can kind of see some of the blue fittings down in there. Uh, <clears throat> that's what would feed the rest of the engine. Um, and one would go over here and one would go back there. Well, what I did was I yanked the hard lines and sent both to the back and ran braided steel flex uh, to the back of the heads and adapted them with, uh, <clears throat> these are all AN fittings. I had to get an AN to, uh, pipe thread, eighth inch MPT. But you can see right there, that's my driver's side head entry. I've got some insulative uh, tape wrapped around parts of it because it's right up next to that exhaust. Um, it's tight squeeze but they both come into the back of the head. Now the way the engine is sloped, the way the engine is sloped, it slopes like this. So you feed from the back, any air will naturally come up the incline. And uh, I don't know if we can see down in there or not. Let me see if I can find a... Now you can't really see it, but what happens, is that uh, um, the the the, uh, the forward ends of the fuel rail in the heads come out with threaded or come out with a braided steel into this fuel regulator, and I've got a gauge mounted onto it, and then you can kind of see there's a line. Maybe you can see down there. Let me focus it. There's a line coming out of the bottom of the regulator that then taps back into the fuel return, the factory return going back to the fuel tank. Um, so the concept is is that any air that gets entrained in the system uh, per se uh, will hit the back of the heads, naturally float forward because of the incline of the engine and also under pressure will be pushed forward and will run through this regulator and back to your tank. The other trick to this modification is, is before the fuel pump, remove all those crappy quick coupler lines and anything else that ingest air into your system. Part of that is the, uh, the uh, mixing chamber on your fuel sender inside the tank. And so I've even replumbed that when I took the tank down and opened up, took the uh, sender off top of the tank and replumbed the internal part of the t internals of the tank. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there's a mixing chamber in these that uh, said that uh, if you go below a quarter tank, uh, we'll start ingesting air into your fuel lines uh, because of the way the mixing chamber is built. And the mixing chamber is built for cold weather performance. Um, it's supposed to mix hot fuel, uh, any returning fuel that's hot, back in with cold fuel immediately at the pickup so that it, it moves better. Uh, because inside your fuel bowl is also your fuel heater, so it runs back there. But, in all actuality, I'm running hot fuel that's just been heated by the engine. Once the engine gets up to temperature, um, I'm running it straight back to the tank, so it actually makes the tank fairly warm, uh, no matter what. So. I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't put a, uh, <clears throat> haven't put a temperature probe on it. I don't know how hot it gets. I haven't had any problems with it, but uh, in theory, it's constantly heating the tank. So um, it's probably slow to start, but you know, you get warm after a while. So, anyways, um, you can do this. Uh, and also put a, a higher performance fuel pump uh, or help a lift pump, uh, help put an extra lift pump and an extra set of filters in your line. Some people do, and it may be something I do down the road. And I have one fitting I haven't, uh, I haven't tore out that's pre-pump. So I only have one of the bad fittings in there. I've, I've torn out all the rest. And, uh, and then I put this in there. And, and uh, by doing this, you actually help um, 
you not only help reliability, but it's also a fuel system that you can grow into if you want to if you want to trick it out and and uh, put higher performance injectors in there that that shoot bigger shots. So uh, you know something to think about. Um, that that. Uh, that fuel pressure regulator is a Mallory, and it's not actually diesel rated. Um, it's been two, three years. Hadn't really had any problems with it. It, it wheat, but uh, hadn't really had any problems with it. Um, I think the only one that whenever I went looking that was diesel rated was an Aeroquip, and, and they want quite a bit of coin for that one. So... You know, take it as you will, it's your choice as to how you want to do it. But uh, I've had pretty good, decent luck with it. I like the modification. So uh, this is a request of uh, somebody that uh, subscribed to my channel, uh, wanted to see what a regulated return uh, or what my modifications were uh, to my fuel system. So hopefully that should give uh, give you a basic idea. Sorry, I don't have any more details, but. I mean, it's been 15,000 miles in about two years. It's been in the, in the vehicle. <laughs> I've just kind of forgot about it. So, All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.